Hi, I'm Pat Keeney, an instructional designer with K-12. My assistant and I are here to work with you on a lab that explores the way ocean salt water mixes with cold, fresh water. This applies to the real world when you consider melting water from winter snow, melting glaciers, or melting sea ice. The density of water depends on the temperature of the water and the amount of dissolved salts in the seawater. Salt water is more dense than fresh water because the added salts increase the mass of a given volume of water. Cold water is more dense than warm water because the molecules are moving slower and are closer together. Salinity is a measure of how salty water is. The saltier the water is, the greater the salinity. In this lab, you will explore how salinity affects the way cold water from melted ice cubes mix with warm water. The important question to consider in this lab is, how does salinity affect the way cold water from melting ice mixes with warm water? Use your prior knowledge to write a hypothesis that describes how salinity affects the way cold water from melting ice mixes with warm water. A good hypothesis should take the form of an if-then statement, such as, if the salinity of water is greater, then... Finish this sentence with your prediction about how the cold water from melting ice will mix with water. Advanced preparation is important to lab work, so we gathered these materials prior to performing the lab. Before starting the lab, we created three tables each with the following columns. Time in minutes, description, temperature at the top of the water in degrees Celsius, and temperature at the bottom of the water in degrees Celsius. The three different water solutions are saturated salt water, unsaturated salt water, and unsalted water. We prepared one data table for each solution. A day before the experiment, we prepared colored ice cubes. We filled trays with water and mixed five drops of red food coloring into each cube compartment. For valid scientific results, we were careful that the same number of drops went into each compartment. We stirred each compartment before placing the tray in the freezer. Once we had colored ice cubes, we made three solutions of different salinities. We filled a container with about 500 milliliters of warm water and about 500 milliliters of room temperature water. In all trials, the initial water temperature in each of the three containers was the same. We used rubber bands to attach two thermometers together to prepare for taking temperature readings at the top and bottom of the water solutions. Doing so resulted in one bulb at the very top of the water and the other thermometer bulb close to the bottom of the water. Data from these locations allow us to see if mixing has taken place. A small temperature difference indicates that mixing has taken place, while a larger temperature difference tells us that mixing has not. We did not add salt to the first solution. We added 100 grams of salt to the second solution. Finally, we added salt to the third solution until it was saturated. Saturation occurs when upon stirring, the salt does not dissolve. After adding the salt, we observed the temperature. Into the solution, we added one colored ice cube and recorded our observations of how the melted water moved through the solution. We also recorded the temperature at the top and bottom of each container. We observed and recorded our observations after 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and 30 minutes. We recorded the temperatures at the top and bottom of each container at each of those time intervals. Think about how the salinity of the water affected the way the cold water mixed with the warm water. This will help you solidify your understanding of how salinity affects the way melted water and water currents behave in the ocean.